Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to another Art for All group. Today I'd like to share a quick video um, reflecting on the fact that it's been one year since the murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protests that happened over the course of last year and continue to happen and will continue to happen. And I'd like to think about how people protested and made artwork when it was very difficult to go to galleries to do the sh traditional sharing of art that would normally happen. So how people adapted. And just to recap, on May 25th, 2020, Minneapolis police officer arrested George Floyd, a 46 year old black man, after a convenience store employee called 911 and told the police that Mr. Floyd had bought cigarettes with a counterfeit $20 bill. 17 minutes after the first squad car arrived at the scene, Mr. Floyd was unconscious and pinned beneath three police officers, showing no signs of life. So a couple of the pieces of artwork that I'm going to show are, that they're about a person who was murdered and so they are upsetting and just to to flag this for anybody who's watching and to acknowledge that yes it's upsetting material but also that it's important that we talk and think about it. So somebody in Minneapolis hired an aeroplane to broadcast some of George Floyd's final words and as a way of socially distance artwork that many many people were going to see but also in a way that didn't rely on smartphones or technology, but just very simply moving through the air, I suppose in a similar way to coronavirus that moves through the air. This airplane banner reads, they're going to kill me. And another one read, I can't breathe. So profound and beautiful and really upsetting and sad and anger inducing and big, as big as the message needed to be. Somebody else doing watercolour images, beautiful watercolour images of the riots and protests in Minneapolis, documenting photographs in a more personal and human way and capturing a different aspect, the beauty of the destruction and the anger and different facets, what was happening and commemorating the anger that needed to be there. And finally, forgive the profanity, um, this is an example of street art and there is now a website documenting where anti-racist street art appears across the world and you can log on and see all over the world where pieces of anti-racist street art have been geotagged. And this is in Brighton. And this hedgehog is having nothing to do with racism. He's, uh, he's decided he's had enough. And uh, I think that maybe we've all got to this point. So, Thank you very much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you all next week.